Welcome, princes and princesses, to our Disney season. We'd like you to be our guests as we show you a whole new world. Please remember, what we say in this episode might be a little risque, but you shouldn't take us that seriously. We're trying to take the Mickey. You ain't ever had a pod like us, so sit back and enjoy the ride. Welcome to World Domination. It's me, <laughs> your host, Jim Fu. <laughs> Uh, it's me, the Emperor. Ooh, all bow to the Emperor. That's me. And it's me, the Lucky Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the the Kraken, but like different. Yes. Uh, and I guess we should also say, happy first birthday, world domination. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, Jesus Christ. Found it. My <laughs> eardrum. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Woohoo! I don't have one of those, but just imagine me raising a uh, espresso martini glass to this. <laughs> wow, how have we been doing this for a year, right? Happy birthday, Domination. Yeah, happy birthday to you all too. Happy birthday, world domination. Wow, what a year. I feel like we've we've really grown in this last 12 months. Mm-hmm. Wow. I haven't. No, but as a pod, we have. Oh, yeah, for sure. And perhaps your waistline, but... Everything oh, yeah, else, maybe. Me- sure. ment- mentally, maybe not. <laughs> so it's very aggressive. I've just, I'm sorry, I've just become I've just become lesser of a person in the last <laughs> couple of months. I was hanging out with my um my nieces the other day. We were talking about her upcoming birthday party, and we said, "Oh, who did you invite?" And she said, "Oh, I invited my other auntie Liana and Uncle Jim." And we said, "Oh, yeah, tell us about them." And she said, "Oh, well, you know, they have a bigger house and lots more toys, <laughs> and they let me stay over, and they don't smell." <laughs> <laughs> So basically, better versions of you guys. Yeah. You guys uh, smell. You have a small house, and you got no toys. Hmm. And apparently, they live in South Africa as well. Ooh, Whoa. fancy! Yeah. yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. So, does she stay at the house in South Africa? Apparently or... so. Yeah. Does she know there's a travel ban right now? <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, well uh, how did that make you feel, Jim? It was. Uh, I felt pretty good to be the lesser Uncle Jim, I'll tell you that much. What? Didn't you always plan to be the weird Uncle Jim? Yeah, exactly. Now it's good to know I'm the smelly Uncle Jim. It's halfway there, I guess. I mean, look, you're there. <laughs> you're there. I think you're definitely the weird uncle. Weird Uncle Jim. It's good to hear how you really feel, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I like half zoned out and then I was like, oh, wait a second. And then I was like, yes. Oh, anyway. It's been a long week, friends, but yeah. we're here. It How are the two of you? Uh, wonderful. That's good. So ridiculously busy this week. Yeah, my bi- my week was crazy as as well, Ken. It's just, I don't know what's going on this week. Mm-hmm. Life, right? Mm, indeed. But it's now a wild Friday night. Woo! So uh... That's how cool we are. <laughs> Yay! This is basically a party, so... We might as well talk about Emma's dating life now. I mean, I'm recording a podcast on a Friday. (laughs) What's up, Demi Nation? It's me, Smelly Uncle Jim, coming to you on Friday night. (laughs) Oh, man. So life's going great. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. To all the single ladies out there, I shower every day and I'm not smelly. You know what? My life is going okay. I bought a new fridge last week and there's now four different types of ice cream in my freezer. Life is good. How much cob loaf have you made, Jim? None. Oh, ice damn. cream, Emma. Ice cream. Priorities. <sighs> oh my god, Jim. Can you like make a cob loaf where you like bake a cake, hollow it out, and then pour ice cream in the middle? You make a compelling case, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> you strong armed me into this one. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, not only are you going to be like weird smelly Uncle Jim, you're also going to be weird smelly Uncle Jim who has diabetes. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It's good that we discovered my goal in life early. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, it may not be a long life, but it'll be a good life, right? Oh, and that's yeah. What we're, here for, we're not here for a long time. We're here for a fun time, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. After this quarantine, I've learned, you know, you need to live in the moment. There's no point, like, (laughs) you know, wasting away doing what you don't love. So, you know, fill that cake with ice cream. (laughs) Fill your heart with laughter and cake. (laughs) That sounds dangerous. (laughs) Filling your heart with cake. Like, do I just inject it straight in? Don't don't do it, Ken. (laughs) Just, like, syringes ice cream into himself. And then you laugh into it. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. But I I guess I did have a couple of pieces of follow-up before we get started. So we got an email the other day from 
let's call her Bethany. <laughs> Bethany. Hey, Bethany. Yeah, names are redacted to protect, protect people's privacy no. on the show. Let's call her Bethany. It said, Hi all, love the podcast, but just wanted to ask if we could get Jim's dad to guest star on an episode <laughs> as he mentioned on the first, po- first episode. Please do not deprive Jim's dad's fan club of getting to hear his plan for taking over and being the best. We need this to be happy. Please put Jim's dad on an episode. Kind regards, Jim's dad's fan club manager. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, so, to be perfectly honest, I didn't exactly remember what I said in the first episode <laughs> about my dad being on the show that triggered such an overwhelming emotional response. But there's a fan club. It's not just one person, apparently. I know. They have a manager and everything. Why would they lie about that? <laughs> um, people really seem to latch onto this idea. <laughs> Even though I've talked about my mum way more often on this show, people really seem to latch onto the idea of my dad being on here. Yeah. Look, I also feel like I've mentioned my dad. Where's my dad's fan club? <laughs> <laughs> I guess people just listen to me and be like, holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, happened that's, there? That's true. That's true. Who created that? It's all right, dad. If you ever listen to this, uh, I'm the manager of your fan club. No, you're not. He didn't leave your Disney shares. No, but I, I love him anyway. Oh, that's nice. I have to say these things. Mum said the other day, she was like... Oh, uh, you know what? I haven't listened to your podcast in a while. I should. I should listen to it more. I was like, oh, girl. <laughs> what have I said in the last few episodes? I don't think you've said oh, anything God. bad about your mom. Yeah, but dad and she she talks to dad. <laughs> she talks. Um, so rest assured, Jim's dad's fan club. Is it Jim's dad's fan club or just Jim's dad fan club? I, I, no, it has to be Jim's dad's fan. Yeah, club. that's hard Jim's to say. Dad's we thank, thank, Jim's we, dad's thank fans. we thank you very much for your mail, Jim's dad's fan club's manager. We'll call it the the JDFC. Yeah, I feel like we need an acronym, yeah. Rest assured, JDFC. Um, <laughs> yes. Plans are in motion. You will be kept abreast of developments. Abreasted? What does that mean? It's a way to keep my dad interested. Oh, okay. Hey! <laughs> abreast means, like, kept informed. Oh. Kept in, kept in the loop. Okay. The other piece of follow-up I have is uh, my sister-in-law sent me a link to something the other day that I thought you guys might find funny. Apparently, researchers in South America are using llama cells to as part of the the process of making a COVID-19 vaccine. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Shoot it into my veins. Shoot it in there. I'd be a llama. Yeah. Can llamas get infected with COVID-19? I could I could be a llama for a couple know. of weeks. I don't know. What was the whole thing about animals? They said animals could, didn't they? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway. But you're talking about the cure. The cure specifically made to help stop COVID-19. The cure to help <laughs> save everyone? The cure. The cure? <laughs> the cure. The, the cure for COVID. <laughs> COVID's cure. So is, gotcha. are we supposed to take it for like either one, they had just uh, like a huge supply of llama or <laughs> is, is, llama like llama. The one, the, the, is llama like the one animal that is like immune to COVID? Look, to be perfectly honest, I didn't do any research on this, so I don't have enough information either way to answer your question. Jim, come on, man. You're the info guy. Llama, llama, I was llama, too busy llama. researching other shit this week. <laughs> Yeah, fair. Also, some follow-up for us from um, last episode. Mm -hmm. I spoke to uh, my father the other day, Mm -hmm. and it was via text, and the conversation went like this. Yo, can I ask you about Top Gun? (laughs) (laughs) Three three hours later, what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I said, is it still one of your favourite movies? I remember you watching the the first scene all the time. He's like, yep, still the best. And I said, what's your thoughts on the volleyball scene in the movie? <laughs> he goes, and I said, is it, is it pointless? And he goes, no, it shows his commitment to a woman. He said he would be <laughs> there. He was there on time. <laughs> what? And then he said, also playing his biggest competitor, wanted desperately to win, but commitment came first. So there goes your, your answer for those of you <laughs> that wanted to know that. I need to watch Top Gun. My dad likes that scene. I'm not going to read any further into that at all. None of us saw this coming. Look, it's his, I'm glad to know that it's still his, his favourite movie. Nice. I may have to um, invite him over and I'll allow him to use my nice TV to, to watch Top Gun since he doesn't have one at the moment. Oh, Aww. poor man. He used to have a big surround sound system as well, didn't he? Oh, yeah, for sure. What's he doing now? Just wow. watching movies on his iPad. Well, because they're staying with friends until their, um, their place is ready um, in a few weeks. So mm-hmm. it's kind of just like watching, I guess, whatever they want to watch. So or kind of just like hanging out in their so lounge So deal room. or no deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, um, I don't know, he's, I think he's got a nice new um, armchair that they've uh, purchased. So that's going to be Ooh. delivered. I think he's ready to go. But uh, look, I, I've already told him he'll be fine in the, in the uh, retirement village because all the old people are deaf mm-hmm. and are asleep by 8pm anyway. So 
he can watch Top Gun as loud as he wants, however late he wants. Just because he didn't leave you any Disney shares, you're putting him in a home already? Gosh. He put himself in that home, man. Anyway, there you go. I told you I'd follow that up and I did. And you Thank probably you, didn't think I was going to. You probably no, thought I, I forgot did. about it. I badgered and... you like a dozen times about yeah, it. Jim, Jim posted on the uh, podcast. Yeah, but that was it was like times. once and it was a few days ago. And I didn't. And I think I commented on it and I kind of just left it there because I was like, I just want him to think that I've forgotten. And then I'll surprise you. That's awful. Because I'm full of you. I'm shocked. Surprises. Shocked. Shocked. You're welcome. Unbelievable. You yeah. been shooketh. <laughs> Gasp. Yeah, you're, well, you're welcome. All right, should we move on to the movie? We should. Do you okay. know what's a fantastic film, guys? Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Oh, I love that one. It's actually Mulan. Do you nah. know what's a shit movie? Star Trek One, the motion picture? No, Star <laughs> Mulan 2. Also, yes, but fucking Star Trek. <laughs> Mulan 2 is the fucking worst movie ever. Is it that bad? It's so bad. I was going to so ask bad. if anybody had watched Mulan 2. I-, I considered two. watching yeah, it. I literally watched it, like, what, like an hour ago? It's terrible. Apparently, they were going to make a Mulan 3, oh, but don't. then they saw Mulan 2 and they were like, nah. <laughs> it's terrible. Do you want to know the bloody storyline of Mulan 2. I, I feel like there's no way out of this without me saying yes, yeah, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Well, I'm glad you that, really that want to hear because to I was going to tell you anyway. No, the, the, the whole story of Mulan 2 is it's set like a month after Mulan 1. Her and bloody Shang are together. He's proposing to her or something. They've got some betting contest. But anyway, what it is, is you know those other three main guys that helped them towards the end, the big, can't remember their names, uh, the big fat guy, the short yeah. guy, and then the I know what you're Ling about, or yeah. whatever his name is. Anyway, so those three guys are in it. So those three plus Mulan and Shang are to escort the emperor's three daughters to go marry off into some like far away like Chinese kingdom to like make peace. Because that seems what Mulan is all about. Yeah. Political marriages. D- during it, Mushu tries to break up Shang and um, Mulan, but th- that's what the entire movie is is them escorting these princesses over there, but then they fall in love with the three. <laughs> Um, army people that are with them, and oh, then it's like I, that I want to marry. Differently. I want to marry for love, not for you know arranged marriages. And like that's the movie. And then <laughs> Shang falls off a cliff at some point. You think he's dead, and then two minutes later he's alive on a horse. And it's like, what is going on? And the guy who voices Mushu, because it used to be Eddie Murphy in the first one. Oh, they changed him. Oh, they can't afford him for more one two money. No, no, no. Because it did have like BD um, Lang and everything in it. No, but the reason he wasn't in Mulan 2 was because of contracting issues with Shrek 2. Hey! So he, much better film. Good job, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> but he, um, but the guy that was did voice it was this white guy who apparently does do the voice, like he's a um, replacement for Eddie Murphy for Donkey and um, Mushu in any like video games or potential like other media. media that comes out but it's this white guy that's like putting on an eddie murphy voice and i was just like what the fuck is happening why couldn't they get charlie murphy but it was just it just why couldn't they do what tom hanks does with his brother just don't watch it Mm-mm. or even paul walker's brothers they bloody stood in for him when he died yeah but anyway don't watch mulan 2 it's terrible worst movie ever i feel like i could have told you to do that before although you i do have a it. do you want it do you want a joke that I got from there. There's a joke in Mulan 2. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. What does Attila say when he gets home? Oh, please don't tell me it's what Hun, I think it is. I'm home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't get it. Because he's like, Attila the Hun. Oh. oh. <laughs> is that what you thought it was going to be, Jim? <laughs> I think I vomited a little in my mouth. Oh, it's such a bad movie, but I did laugh at that. Oh. And you thought Ken's jokes were bad. My God. <laughs> I didn't create that. Whoa, no one thinks my that. jokes are bad. I don't think your jokes are bad. Well, some <laughs> of your jokes. <laughs> I don't think most of your jokes what? are bad, Ken. Jim, the betrayal. <laughs> Would uh, somebody like to tell us the plot of uh, Mulan 1, a much better piece of uh, modern art cinema? <laughs> Before anybody starts, we should probably just say that we originally intended this to be a review of both the original and the remake, which was supposed to come out in March. <gasps> thanks, COVID-19. Yeah, thanks, COVID. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> you leave Obama out of this. <laughs> He's a good man. <laughs> I miss him so much. Anyway. Okay, well, let's talk about Mulan. Short version. This movie follows the um, life of a young girl called Mulan, 
who's uh, a bit of a, um, not really ladylike, I'd say, but she's been put up to be selected as a concubine for the king. Is that really what what's going on there? Yeah. Good grief. Yeah. I thought it was just... Marriage. I thought it was matchmaking. Oh, was it yeah. just match? Oh, I think it was just. I think. I think the the mythology where it's come from potentially yes, but I think in the movie in the Disney version, I think she was literally just a matchmaker. Oh, interesting. And trying to turn her into a woman oh, to okay. then be like, here's a handsome Chinese man that I found for you. Nice. Plus, I don't really think there would be that much need for a selection process for concubines. You're a concubine. Congratulations. Now, there's yeah. multiple steps, I'd assume. Uh, but yes, um, she goes through the matchmaking process. She's clearly not really fit for the job. And uh, a lucky cricket was involved. The lucky cricket ruined her chances. Uh, she And then she ended up going back with her head in shame. Her family is a bit upset. And then uh, meanwhile, uh, the Huns, uh, which is, I assume they're Mongolian. They're like... They're not. Aren't they? Nope, they're not Mongolian. Oh, they're not. Let's just say, okay, the Huns uh, breach the Great Wall of China and attack the uh, Empire. Uh, the king um, puts out a conscrip- conscription notice and gets uh, the fa- each family to send out one male to uh, fight the war. Mulan's father is uh, a bit old and walks with a cane uh, because of his past battle, but, he, uh, but there was no son in that family, so... He had to go and fight the war. Uh, Mulan notices this, uh, you know, knows that if the father goes and fights, uh, he's probably going to die because of uh, his condition. (laughs) Of old age. Of old age, yes. And the the, the leg thing. Yeah, Mulan steals his armor and his sword and uh, goes and dresses as a man and uh, goes to fight the war for him. She trains up at the training camp, becomes an amazing soldier and uh, goes... Uh, fight the Huns uh, uh, along with Shang. Shang, General Shang. Shang. Yeah. Oh, sorry. He was like a captain or something. Yeah, captain. I think he doesn't. He become general when his dad when his dies. His dad dies. Mm. Yeah. I didn't think general was a hereditary position, mm. but well, look, that's I don't it. know. Uh, anyway, sorry, can continue. Yeah. She did a good job. Uh, you know, she uh, did some smart things and uh, took down the uh, most of the Huns on top of a snow mountain. But right up, uh, but she also took a uh, she took a knife to the to the stomach and therefore they had to uh t- you know take her clothes off to f- uh, fix her up but uh they realized she's a woman and then they a bit and then they were like oh nope that's against the rules and uh they left her there okay that's a bit that's a bit darker than the actual story uh, anyway th- no, she- that, that's no exactly the movie what gets real dark real quick that's exactly what happened oh, okay yeah uh after that they went back uh the rest of the rest of the uh, team went back to uh, get celebrated uh, their, vic- their victory. Turns out the Huns, five of the Huns weren't killed during that avalanche on the snow mountains and uh, they came to assassinate the king. The emperor. The emperor. The emperor. Sorry, emperor. they came to a- ass- uh, assassinate the emperor. Uh, the, no one knows except for Mulan who saw them on top of the mountain and uh, she comes back and sa- uh, saves the day. Yay! Yay! With fireworks! With fireworks! Fireworks. One of she saves China's China. greatest inventions. Fireworks. Is there any problem they can't solve? Probably a lot. Fire? <laughs> name me name me one problem fireworks can't solve, Emma. Cancer. No. Nope. Shoot a firework at cancer, it's gone. <laughs> problem solved. Next. Try harder. Uh, I think that's the wrong kind of gone that I'm thinking of, though. <laughs> that's like, oh, well, it is technically gone. The best kind of gone. <laughs> I didn't talk about Mushu. Man, fuck Mushu. <laughs> Fuck you. Why the fuck is Mushu in this movie? Why the fuck is Eddie Murphy in this movie? Although, I will say, I do like that line, Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. <laughs> that was funny. I do like that line. The rest of Mushu, I, I could I could, I could, could do without. Yeah, I didn't quite get Mushu. Uh, you guys are the fucking worst. The movie is brilliant. You guys are terrible. There's so many annoying things about this movie. This movie is brilliant. It has fantastic songs. Uh, Mulan is also one of my dad's favourite movies as well. Really? And, yeah. Actually, there is, like, no romance in that. I wonder whether he'll listen to my critiques of the movie. You know what, Jim? Look, we'll listen, (laughs) but you're wrong. Because the movie is fantastic. And even just re-watching it the other day, I was like, good God, this is a fantastic film. My uh, opinion of the movie has changed. I think it's a good movie, but uh, it's still not my favorite. Yeah, I will say that 
my opinion of this movie has softened somewhat on a rewatch, but I still have some mm. some gripes with the movie. Most of my gripes are around how like annoying Eddie Murphy is as as Mushu. <laughs> oh, now, if you think he's annoying, watch Mulan too. He basically is the reason for everything that goes wrong for Mulan. Watch Mulan too, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> just gonna pick my response to everything. <laughs> it's so the, bad. So the thing that Liana pointed out to me that I can't stop thinking about is that when Mulan makes it to like the training camp, we see that people get turned away for not being fit enough, and Mulan herself is turned away initially for not being able to complete the training. By that logic. Mulan's dad was in no danger of having to go off to war because he couldn't even fucking walk. Yeah, but we, she didn't know that. And why would she want to risk that and get her father sent off and potentially die? You know, we're also going to ex- um, suspect that the the training camp wasn't right next to her bloody village. He may have died on the way over. We don't know. I just, I just don't like that there's, like, no stakes, really, for the character because, like, there's clearly, like... Her dad would have been fine. We don't know that. The thing that I hate most about this movie is right at the end, after like, you know, the bad guy's been defeated, you know, Mulan has been given the sword by the emperor, offered a seat on the Imperial Council, and she gets back and her grandmother says, great, she brought home a sword. She should have brought home a man. I hate that line. It undoes everything the movie is supposed to be about. I love that line. I fucking (laughs) love that grandma. No, I hate it. I get what you're saying. Like, the whole thing is about her not needing a man and she can do... Yeah. Anything a man could do and then... Yeah, but the whole thing, right? Look, I get what you're saying. But the whole thing is at the beginning of the movie, they're setting her up to like be... A, like that. That's what the cultural thing is. She's an old lady. You cannot expect her... She didn't go on the same journey that Mulan did. I know, but surely she, you can't expect surely she can understand that, you know, Mulan has, you know, shown that women can do more, that they, you know, they are worthy of respect. And she gets home and she's like, but where's your man, honey? In, in any case, I just think it's a bad thing for that character to do. Not even if you're taking away like the historical accuracy. I just think like that, that character should not have said that line. Look, Jim, I'm getting that you're feeling very strongly about this. <laughs> you're wrong. The ending of the movie is brilliant and I love it. <laughs> and the best line is actually when he's like, when she's, Mulan says to him, do you want to stay for dinner? And he's like, do you want to stay forever? And it's the best <laughs> because he's an attractive bloody general or whatever he is. And he's fantastic. And look, just. He's so forgettable. I, it took me like 10 Whoa. times to like learn his name. He's like the most forgettable Whoa. Disney prince. I, I did forget. Apart Whoa. from maybe Eric. He'll make a man out of you. That mont also can we talk about that montage because that training montage is brilliant. Are you ready to be devastated? Oh, here we go. What? That song isn't in the remake. There's no songs in the remake. Oh. Thanks COVID. I'm glad I don't need to watch this movie now. <laughs> mhm. Also, don't they have like isn't there like some witch lady in it and mm-hmm. something? Yeah. There's no Mushu in the remake. Thank Gilgamesh. Um, <laughs> there's no songs. That's a bummer. You have to one thing you need to admit about Mulan is it has good songs. Yes, I will admit that. The songs yes. in this movie are pretty good. I'm not too sure about the remake now that I hear that there's no songs. Aww. Yeah, I do remember hearing that, actually. But, you know, they are trying to make it more historically accurate, I guess. Oh, historically accurate. There's a fucking lady that turns into a dragon. That's historically accurate. Wait, what? Sorry, more thing? historically appropriate, I mean, rather. Or, like, you know, visually accurate. I don't know. They're trying to make so it more it's realistic. So, it's more... It's more... It's changing it up. So, it's more historically accurate that a human turns into a dragon as opposed to a dragon <laughs> just existing. Correct. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm glad we're on the same page. This <laughs> <laughs> just... But that's oh, the thing, like, man. it's so hard to nail down when the animated version is actually taking place. Because, like, the original poem was written sometime between the 4th and 6th century. The mm. villains in the movie come from this time period. They were incorporated into Chinese culture not long after that poem was written. But in the movie, we see the Forbidden City and the Great Wall, which weren't built for another thousand years after the poem was written. I guess it's a way for Disney to tell people it's China. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> it. It's like, you guys recognize this? It's China! Let's put a wall in. You guys know China. Then they'll get it. <laughs> Look, it definitely helped me. There are some things about that I like about this movie. I do like the bit when they show uh, Shang falling in love with Ping after she whacks him. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that bit where he's like, quest- he's questioning his heteroness. Like he gets whacked yeah. and he's like, I, puppy. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that bit. Did I miss that bit completely? <laughs> the movie's brilliant. And you're all wrong. One other thing I'd like to ask Ken for some input on. I don't know how much of an answer you can give me here. Mm-hmm. But there's there's a lot of jokes that rely on the double meaning of words in this movie. Like there's a joke where he says, 
like the the military guy says order and people start yelling out like i'll have the noodles like i'll have the yeah like what do they do with those jokes in the translation i wonder the translation yeah like when if they're translating this in, this movie into chinese like what would they do with those jokes because hmm. like presumably you can't make a double meaning joke on the word order in chinese in the same way that you can in english oh, i would uh, i have no clue yeah it's actually that's true i have no clue i watched that's the english question. version <laughs> yeah it's fair <laughs> You're giving away Ken's culture. He was anonymous before. I was anonymous. <laughs> Cut this bit out. <laughs> Cut it out. Never. <laughs> so, the plan of... What's the... Shan Yu. Shan Yu. His plan is basically invade China and take over. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Profit! <laughs> Pretty much. So, what do we think of his plan? His plan was terrible. His plan was real bad. Yeah. His plan was basically just like, show up. Yeah. yeah. See what happens. Kill a guy. And then, then we'll see how we do. He was good at war. Like, yeah. you know, normal warfare was fine. But like that plan where he st- stood up from the snow and the five people got, got together and decided to, you know, run right just, into just the run palace. To China. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised it worked, honestly, but... Like, uh, it's a. I mean, terrib- they got pretty far, it's, eh? Yeah, they got really far, but it's a terrible plan. You know what? I actually feel like he was probably trying to do a little bit of a. What's that guy's? Um, is it Ku- Kublai Khan? Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan, like the the um, who was Genghis Khan's Genghis grandson? Khan's grandson. And yeah. he like, <laughs> he he did it. It worked for him, and he took over bloody China. And it's potentially like a little bit of that, just being like, nah, fuck it, I'm just gonna go take over China. And just yeah. see, see what happens. He was basically the reason they built the Great Wall. Yeah. But they had bloody like five people at the end of it. So it was just kind of like, oh. And <laughs> what's your plan now? <laughs> There's like a million other people in this city. What are you going to do like, then? They, they had a good plan. And then all of a sudden it was just like, nah, man, fuck it. I'm too emotional now. My anger is, is boiling. And then just like ran in. <laughs> and now we improvise. Yeah, like go home and regroup or something. Don't just run straight in. Get more people. Get more people. Like if yeah. you couldn't do it with the like hundreds or however many it was that he had, why do you think five is going to work? <laughs> You've proven to be the most powerful of us five. He sure can smack a guy good though, I'll tell you that. <laughs> He's real good at the smacking a guy. He just looked super creepy Yeah, what's too. with that? His skin they- was like grey and his eyes were black. It's like, what? So the eye thing is a real thing. I don't know if it's specifically from the culture that he comes from, but like uh, some cultures in that region, in that region, tattoo the whites of their eyes. Oh, oh. Can you imagine how many of them went blind <laughs> back in the day <laughs> because of trying to tattoo almost, their eyes? Almost, almost, almost. Ah, beans. <laughs> Next. I'm very uncomfortable now. But yeah, so uh, shit plan, yeah? So what are we rating him? That's a, that's a one from me there, chief. He gets a three from me because... He's good with wars and he actually got there, but damn, like, it's a terrible thing. Actually, yeah, I'll give him a, I'll give him a two. Okay. He, he did make it all the way to the palace. He just had it, no game. It, it worked. It just didn't make <laughs> any like, sense. He's kind of like, oh, what now? <laughs> oh, God. He's I like, didn't expect to get this far. <laughs> <laughs> and like, even much. like, even when they're at the beginning where like, um, the guy lights the, um, the beacons and it's like, you know, all of China knows you're here now. And he's like, good. And it's like, no, why aren't you coming quietly? Yeah, no. <laughs> why did you really even bother like coming in during the dark? Just, just attack. You could have gotten so much further if you just didn't do that. You know what he reminds me of? He reminds me when I try and eat a whole cake and Liana comes in and was like, why did you do that? And I'm like, I just wanted to see if I could. <laughs> and I could. <laughs> Can I go now? Um, <laughs> I'm going to go throw up. Uh, oh my God. I was about to ask how you felt afterwards. I'm also going to give him a two. That makes him our worst villain by a country mile. <laughs> Essentially, up until Mulan kind of did the whole avalanche thing, he was all right. Mm. And then it was just kind of like, well, and he should have gone away to like regroup, yeah. as Ken said, but then he didn't. He was just like, well, I've come this far. I might as well try and go the whole way and then got <laughs> fucked over by fireworks. I can go the distance. He was so petty he as could. well. At the end, it wasn't about killing the emperor. It's like, oh, bow to me, bow to me. I'm like, um, where are you <laughs> going with this? Um, he wants you to bow to him. Well, that's a thing. I remember reading somewhere that that was like one reason why... Chinese audiences didn't really like this movie that much is because like the emperor bows to Mulan at the end and like the emperor bows to no one that's kind of the th- that was why uh Shen Yu was trying to get him to bow yeah uh, okay. yeah look I, I I do totally get that and 
whatever, but I also think it's more like he appreciates Mulan. And yeah, I, I, I get that thematically it, it works in the story. Because Mulan's a perfect movie. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mul- you said, yep, yeah. <laughs> we're cutting it. <laughs> By that logic, we're doing Star Trek season next, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, true. All right. Agree to disagree, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Ooh. So I guess we should do a little bit of a season wrap up on how the villains have fared now that we've now that we're, we we've come to the end of our of our regularly scheduled pro, uh, programming of villain yes yeah regularly scheduled programming for of vi- for Disney villains yes would you guys like to guess who our highest scored villain is um, Jafar fuck, I'm trying to remember Jafar it is actually a tie between Jafar and Syndrome on twenty four points oh. out of oh, thirty damn. Ooh. Ooh, damn, Syndrome. Uh, next is Hades from Hercules yep. on 23. Oh, I've got some feedback from audience that they want to see the spreadsheet at some point. I will put a picture of the show notes. Sorry, picture of the spreadsheet in the show notes. Because you talk about the spreadsheet and people want to see it, apparently. <laughs> Who the fuck said that? <laughs> Probably an engineer. Ken, Ken works with a lot of engineers. <laughs> <laughs> they like spreadsheets. They really do. I want to see your spreadsheet. I'll How see are you spreadsheet. calculating this? Please, my spreadsheet. You each give numbers. Do you then add them up? And we just lost three listeners. <laughs> 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 All right. So those are our three highest rated villains. Mm-hmm. Jafar, Syndrome, and Hades. Uh, and there's only a point in it between the three. Would either of you care to guess who the highest average scorer out of the three of us is after that? It would be me. It is you. <laughs> I would definitely say Ken, 100%. Wait, I was, yeah. wait, so I was on 60... So Ken is our highest average scorer. 6.66 when we were at... You've dropped. You're, you're now given an average of 6.25. Hey! Emma's on 5.6 and I'm on 6. I actually try to be harsher this week, so I gave the guy a 3. <laughs> and then you both went 2. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, see, it's just it's just this uh, spreadsheet in action that uh, Jim and I are just naturally <laughs> more negative people than you are. Damn you! My harsher critics. Fun facts. Fun facts with Emma. Fun facts. Woo. Cool. So we've kind of alluded to it before, but Mulan is based on the story of Hua Mulan, who is a. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ken, um, who was a legendary uh, female warrior in China. So the story of her, I guess there's a lot of different ones, but um, she was said to have disguised as a man to help her father avoid war, which is the same, obviously, um, and was in the army for 12 years in the 6th century. An earlier version of the myth um, as well had Mulan commit suicide to avoid being a concubine. Jesus Christ. So, Wait, what? Basic, Yeah, so basically the, the, the story of that version of the myth is that it's basically the same sort of storyline and she goes home, when she goes home and she finds that um, because she's been away for 12 years, her dad has actually passed away a while Aww. ago um, and then the emperor sends a request for her to be his concubine. So she's like, nope, and kills herself. Damn. Yeah. In the 1980s, it was originally going to be released as a, um, a straight-to-video film called China Doll about an oppressed woman in China who was rescued by a British soldier who takes her away. <laughs> Good <laughs> grief. I'm so glad they didn't make that. Oh, Good God. Why? That would have been like... And you didn't like regular Mulan. I know. Good <laughs> grief. Can you imagine if they actually made that Jesus turd? Oh, my God. Christ. That um, is a terrible storyline. Yeah. So And then, obviously, they went down the path of I think one of the um, guys who was involved was like well why don't we actually follow this this myth of this story of Mulan and, and whatever and that's how they kind of went down that path goddamn white men try to rescue everything what yeah it's basically what's the bet Pocahontas would, but in yeah, China <laughs> what's the bet they would have made like a throwaway opium mention oh like want some opium honey it's good for you it's it's basically just Chinese Pokemon. <laughs> so the movie took five years to make um, and 700 animators, artists and technicians. During production, there was 1,630 pounds of coffee brewed. That is a lot of coffee. That is oddly specific. How could they possibly know that? Did they have like an intern just being like... They probably ordered bags. I was going to say, you know, because it's COVID, you see those people outside of Coles with like the little hand clicker. <laughs> Do you reckon they had an intern just standing at the coffee pot with like a... 100%. 100%. But then it would probably also go to a point where they were like, we seem to be going through a lot of coffee. What? And then probably did it that way. Anyway, that was what the internet told me. So the singing voice for Mulan, um, because it's a different voice and singer like for Mulan, is the same person that sang as Jasmine. Oh, Is it really? Yeah. Damn. Same lady. That girl That's good cool. at singing. 
Yeah. That is a fun fact. It. You're welcome. <laughs> Does that mean they're not all fun facts, Jim? What? I plead the fifth. <laughs> Fuck off. Jim's the weird uncle. He has a different standard of Smelly fun. uncle, Ken. Come on. Yeah, I'm glad I can't smell you from here. Um, when Chifu is calling out names of the people serving in the army, um, these were actually names of the staff working on the film. And um, in the tombs, um, you know, when they all start lighting up and everything, they're at, they actually feature the names of the movie's artists. Ooh, that's cool. Yes. Uh, Chris Sanders, who voiced the dog of Little Brother... <laughs> Which, all right, good job. Um, it was also the voice of Stitch in the Lilo and Stitch franchise. Wait, what? Oh. I thought Stitch was done by the director. Maybe in the oh, TV show. In, I think TV it's in the show. TV yeah, show, okay. in the franchise, oh, yeah. not the yeah. not, not the, the original movie. movie. Okay. Yeah, Mulan is only one of two Disney princesses to wear pants. The other one is Jasmine. Yeah. So again, more in common with Jasmine. Those two characters do have a few things in common now that yeah. I think about it, especially like the remake Jasmine. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I think a good note to make is that Mulan is actually the only Disney princess who's not technically a princess. I was going to say that. Mm. Oh yeah. She doesn't become a princess. She does. She's not a princess. There's no. And she doesn't marry no. a prince. Yeah. Either. She doesn't come from a royal bloodline. She doesn't no. marry a prince. Why? She, no. I don't know why Disney sticks with because the, she the, saved China. No, but, Jim. No, no. I don't know why Disney <laughs> sticks with the whole princess thing. Like, no, I don't know either. Why? It seems needlessly exclusive and prescriptive as to what kids should aspire to. Like, why are you saying little girls should want to be princesses? I don't get why they're sticking with it. Just come um, up with some other label. I want to be a princess. No. <sighs> You want to be married off to your fourth cousin in Saxony? No, I want to be a Disney princess. But that's equivalent. <laughs> Our mate Jackie Chan did the voice of Lee Shang in the Chinese version mm-hmm. of Mulan. Jackie Chan also recorded a music video in Cantonese for I'll Make a Man Out of You. Oh, man, I want to see that so bad. I've sent you a link to it. <laughs> of course you did. It's it, it's exactly what you're thinking. It's basically just him just standing oh, yes. on a set doing vague martial arts moves and then also like pivoting towards the camera every 10 seconds. Yes, Jackie. And it's in Cantonese for you, it Ken. It is. <laughs> Does it make sense in Cantonese, Ken? It's, so, it's not Make a Man Out of You at all. It seems a lot more like patriotic. <laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> what does it translate into? I feel like it'd also be really hard to like sing songs in a different language and, you know, make Localize it fit. It. Yeah. But make it fit like um, melody wise. So if it's not, I'll make a man out of you. What is he saying, Ken? I'm trying to figure it out. Like it's all like this super like old, old, you know, kind of more traditional <laughs> kind of tra- Chinese, you know what I mean? I mean, I guess that fits. Okay. Yeah, it's more historical. Like it's you're my one bloody Chinese friend, and you can't. You only have one Chinese friend. I mean, to be yeah, fair, so. could you translate Shakespeare into modern English? I could give it a red hot go. <laughs> uh, anyway, what have we got? Um, so the directors Barry Cook and Tony Brancroft they made cameos in the film, acting as the the two guys that were lighting fireworks near the end of the film. Cool. It was the first feature-length film created by Walt Disney Feature Animation Florida. Woo! Ah, oh, so of course we have Florida to thank for this too. <laughs> Jim, I will drive to camera. Do it. And I will fight Do it. you. And I will be listening to fucking Jackie Chan's version of <laughs> Man, <laughs> Man, <laughs> Man Out of You for that entire three-hour drive. I really psych you up. I, I, how psyched would I would you be at the end of a three hour drive if you just listened to that song? Leanna and I went on a um, tour bus trip through Canada once, and it was basically like us and like ten other Australian girls. And basically, the only thing we listened to for like the ten days we were on this trip was "I'll Make a Man Out of You." Is that why this song makes you think of Canada? This is why that song this, that song makes me think of Canada. Yes, it's a great song. So, uh, one last fun fact I got here is that the um, the original Barbie version of Mulan was much bustier um, because. Because they had initially been created um, off of Barbie's figure. They basically mm-hmm. just copied that. Disney was unable to convince Mattel to uh, change this. So they came to a compromise. And they then based her off of Midge. Hey, Midge. Who, <laughs> who is Barbie's more proportionate friend. Hey, how's it going, Midge? And she was initially <laughs> released in 1963 to show that Barbies were, were meant to something more than a sex symbol. Because apparently if you're proportionate, you're therefore not a sex symbol. Mm-hmm. Thanks, 1963. Have you seen pictures of Midge? Yeah. <laughs> I have not. It's hard to like 
<laughs> find like good pictures of Midge because like for obvious I don't know it's obvious reasons but for like one reason or another they haven't really made the Midge doll in a lot of years but she's not that much more proportionate than Barbie yeah but a little bit she's just like you know how Barbie has like a, a real like hourglass waist as she comes to like tiny waist yeah it's just slightly less pronounced with Midge which technically is more yeah. proportionate. <laughs> I regret looking up Midge. I'm horrified. This is too late in the night for me to look up. Oh, <laughs> yes. Please, don't Google Midge. Midge is a type of, like, insect. You want to Google, like, Barbie Midge. No, I did that. I'm still horrified. <laughs> oh, okay. <gasps> oh, where am I going? Now I, I can't help but picture, like, Marge from The Simpsons because Mo calls her Midge. Oh, Midge. <laughs> hey, Midge. <laughs> oh, Midge. Anyway, and those are my fun facts for the day. Cool. So I, I got some good ones. So you, you ready for one, Ken? This one's just for you. Oh, okay. Sorry, should I leave? Yeah, that'd be best. <laughs> uh, is it Farping? Yes. You go, Ken. Tell us about Farping. Oh, Farping. The name that Mulan ge- uh, Far Mulan gave herself when she was pretending to be a boy is actually a Chinese pun. Hell Woo! yeah. It actually means flower pot, uh, which means eye candy. It means like fancy boy, doesn't oh, it? Oh, that too. Yes. Um, yeah, no. It's uh, a joke because ping means both like, you know, calm and balanced but it also, uh, far ping, the sound actually means flower pot. And uh, flower pot uh, uh, means eye candy. So it's talking about women who don't really have any attributes, uh, any positive attributes apart from looking good and holding flowers. Cool. Oh, wow. Well, it's kind of sad. Right. Yeah. Mm. Also effeminate men, apparently. Mm. I feel I feel like that one kind of fits more. Yes, that is... A, yes. He is a feminine yes. man. She is she an effeminate, is an effeminate man. Yeah. man. You got any more fun facts, Ken? Ooh, um, I have one here that says, Mulan touches her hair all the time um, as a habit because the voice actress, uh, Ming-Na Wen, uh, also does that. Uh, are you ready for me to really bring the movie down? So Mulan is the Disney princess with the highest body count. She kills 1,994 people people and 2,000 horses Woo! because apparently they animated 2,000 riders for that scene where the avalanche happens oh, and yeah. only six people survive so she kills 1,994 people and 2,000 horses good job Mulan good work, with Mulan. one firework bloody with, brilliant Mulan well done that's a that's a pretty good KD ratio yeah yeah, yeah. so are uh, she and uh, Merida from Brave are the only two Disney uh, female protagonists that are skilled in archery that's cool. <gasps> Jim, I prepared one for you. Yeah. Did you know that there's a crater on Venus named Hua Mulan? I did not know that, but that's yes. cool. Approved. Uh, the name was approved in Space 1991. Fact. All craters on Venus are named after famous women or famous uh, female characters. Hashtag space facts. Because women, Thanks, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, that kind of logic. Thanks, Jim. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> good logic. <laughs> you get space. No, no, no. Good, good fact, not great logic. Yeah. All right. Uh, are you ready for my for my really down effect that's really going to bring oh you down? Oh, God. I don't know, am I? I don't know. We'll see how we go. <laughs> so the two of you may be interested to hear that the current US vice president weighed in on Mulan when the movie came out in 1998. Now, this is a shocker, I know, but the man who calls his wife mother and refuses to be alone with a woman who is not his wife had something to say about a strong, independent woman like Mulan. So do you know the person I'm talking about? Mike Pence? Oh, I don't know a lot about him, to be honest. Okay. Uh, So in 1998, when he was a radio talk show host, uh, he wrote an article on his website claiming that he was victimized by Mulan, saying, (laughs) Disney expects us to believe that Mulan's ingenuity and courage were enough to carry her to military, military success on an equal basis with her male cohorts. Obviously, this is Disney's attempt to add childhood expectation to the cultural debate over the role of women in the military. (laughs) Then he rambles on for a bit about how outrageous it is that people have sex before ending with, moral of the story, women in military, bad idea. (laughs) God damn, this guy is trash. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Oh, man. Wow. Mm. Way to bring it down. It's outrageous that a smart woman would get far in the military. Actually, that's what bothered me so much in the like when in my original wa- uh, watch that you know everyone was trying to stop her from you know doing being smart. Yeah, exactly. I'm like just like this is the military. There's no place for that here. <laughs> wow. I just want you know want to support the character, and everyone's trying to take them down. I'm like no, but you know now I've turned you know now I, I've watched it again. I'm like ah, oh, this is a good movie. 
I like it. So at least I'm not as harsh a critic of Mulan as Mike Pence. I don't feel victimized by this movie, Emma. If you did, I would not give two shits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because Mulan is a great movie. I also, da, da, for the record, da, da. have no problem with women in the, mili- da, da. in the military. Oh, really? How do you feel about them defeating the Huns? I thought you were going to say, but how do you feel about them thirking? Because that was Mike Pence's main gripe with the movie. <laughs> mm, <geez. laughs> oh, it's such a good movie. Oh, oh, somebody at work, I was talking to them about, about Mulan today, and they were talking about how Mulan has 50% less lines than Mushu. What? Yeah. Yeah, but that's because I would say it's because Mushu rambles a shit ton. Yeah, and also like Mulan's whole deal is like she doesn't want to be discovered, so she tries to be like quiet and... Yeah, Off whereas Mushu's just like... Run, it's Eddie bloody. Murphy. He just can't yeah. shut up. He's basically Donkey. <laughs> yeah, but he's, he is Donkey. Eddie Murphy can do one character. Yeah, but look, he's made a shit ton of money doing yeah, it. Yeah, oh, so. no, I'm not... <laughs> well done, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> yeah. He really found his niche. Uh, do you guys know who was originally cast for Mushu? No. Joe Pesci. Really? Yes. Oh. Can you imagine that? How sick would that I have been? I don't know what he oh. does, what he's been. I'm just picturing him in Lethal Weapon, basically that character. Have you seen Home Alone, Ken? Ah, uh, yes. You know the like the fat short thief. Yes. Him. Oh, okay. Oh, I did have one more fun fact, but this is mostly just for Ken. I don't think this will make it. Look any... how many fun facts this movie has, Jim. How could know, you right? not like it? Uh, this one's not about the movie at all. This is oh. just when I was doing a little bit of Chinese history research. So I could have a semblance of something to talk about. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, a possibly fictional Chinese dynasty, the Jia, have an emperor known as Yu the Engineer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you got Peter the Great, Ivan the Terrible, and Yu the Engineer. Yu the Engineer. Nice. <laughs> okay, should we move on to our plans? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. So should I get out my random number generator? <laughs> yes, you should. Yeah, yes. Everyone wants to guess. Like everyone, Everyone's guessing who it's going to be first general. this time. Ken, you're going first. Oh, 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 yes. Hello. Hi, Ken. This is weird. I didn't expect to go first. So, uh, you're just going to copy you know, mine. I, I haven't written a plan yet. I was just going to copy Emma's. <laughs> <laughs> no. Here's my plan, everyone. Welcome to Ken's Mulan Domination. <laughs> what is, is the plan to dominate Mulan? Dominate Mulan. Like... Also, yes. <laughs> my actual plan is to amass a large quantity of lucky crickets and then sell them to prospective concubines. This way, they wow. ruin the matchmaking uh, process to, uh, for the king and therefore also ruin the matchmaking bis- business. Uh, all the matchmakers would get, get um, would lose their jobs and, uh, you know, the Huns should implement undercover uh, women to uh, take over as... Uh, new matchmakers and therefore uh, taking over the matchmaking business in China. <laughs> Plus, you can sell your excess cricket stock for protein. Exactly. I, I was going to go. Uh, that was actually uh, one of my original. Um, well, sorry, <laughs> it was one of the tangents that my plan went on. But I was like, nah, probably Wait, not. When you say lucky crickets, do you just mean crickets? Yeah, they're all lucky. There was they're one lucky. cricket in that show, and it was very lucky. Therefore, 100% all of crickets, crickets are lucky. Are lucky. Okay, all I right. was hoping the crickets were going to do its crickety thing today, but you know, they've been very quiet. That's because they heard your plan when you were practicing it. Damn it. It's also quite like, cold no. outside. Yeah, that's true. No, they, they clearly don't want me to catch them. Anyway, so <laughs> after... Gotta catch them all, <laughs> crickets. Woo. I'd be more surprised if they did want you to catch them, Ken. Ooh. I'd probably feed them, like, sugar water or something like that. I'd be a good host. Anyway, we keep digressing and inter- interrupting. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I distracted myself too. So, um, after that, you can, um, you know, choose terrible uh, wives for the emperor. And also, while you're in the matchmaking business, make ter- uh, select terrible relationships for everyone else. And when everyone have uh, terrible lives because they're in t- uh, unhappy relationships, uh, they can't get uh, and they can't get their lives together. They can't focus when they fight. Therefore, you will win the war. Aha! Apart from that, after you become reputable as matchmakers, I, I feel like that's you know the whole point of ma- matchmakers. You ch- you base people on their reputation, and then you match them up. You know, see see who who's going to marry up well. Um, you can marry some Huns into royalty. Or maybe just vouch for some Huns to um, say, oh these, oh, these guys are, uh, you know, uh, higher in the hierarchy and um, deserve to be hu- in high spots in, the po- in politics and therefore control the politics in China as well. Uh, with uh, both, you know, winning the war and controlling the politics in China, I feel like you've got a pretty good, uh, g- good, 
you know, good bet in taking over China and therefore taking over the world. So your plan is basically Mongol invasion. Maybe. <laughs> Beans. Plan's perfect, right? I... <laughs> okay, moving on. I... I... <laughs> there's just so many questions, but like, yeah, there's a I lot don't of even steps know. in here that I'm just like, yeah, but how and why? I told you <laughs> all the steps, <laughs> people. We know please the why. Pay Emma. attention, Emma. No, Emma. I have one word for you: uh, concubines. Concubines. <laughs> I'm just okay. All right. Cool. Do you know how um, Chinese dynasties last so long? Do you know how there's always an heir for the emperor? It's the hard work of many concubines. <laughs> Gross. Y- yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, I have questions, but I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. Look, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> See, if I can confuse you, I can confuse the Chinese Empire. <laughs> so, this is how you f- <laughs> confuse the Chinese. <laughs> so, you actually go up to them and explain to them how you're going to take them over. <laughs> and then... The traditional way to win, Ken, is to not confuse the judges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know. Bit of a abstract kind of guy. Not really. I look, this is a very difficult one to come up with a plan for. Yeah. So I think the fact that you've like gone completely left of field and like come up with something completely outrageous, I do enjoy that. So you definitely get bonus points. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also not going to say anything too bad because I have not heard Jim's <laughs> You just, you wait. <laughs> so like we were saying earlier, like the, the people that invade in this movie, they're not like, they're, they were probably from Mongolia, but they weren't like, they weren't like part of like, you know, Genghis Khan's ilk. They were more Huns, which were like kind of Turkic people. Anyway, that's not the point. Thank you for the history lesson. I'm I'm, I'm taking a leaf out of Genghis Khan's book. For my plan. One of the reasons Genghis Khan was so successful in conquering big swaths of land is that he would rock up to a place with his army, find the richest person in town, rob them of all of their stuff, and then find the poor people and say, hey, do you like being poor? And they'd be like, well, obviously no. And be like, cool, you want to come with us then? And be like, yeah, all right. And then he would distribute out all of the rich person's stuff to the poor people, and then he would get more people for his army. So basically Ooh. Robin Hood. Yeah, basically Robin Hood, but like... With an agenda. The evil with, lo- kind. with lots more killing. <laughs> so much more killing. So much more just killing. Just a little bit. So yeah, so rather than killing those people in that town just for the sport of it, why don't we try and just kill the one dude, the richest dude in town, redistribute his wealth, and then get those people to fall into my army with me. So rather than having just 2,000 people on horseback, I've got 2,000 people on horseback, plus some peasants. You know, a sword hero there wouldn't hurt. God damn. And then I've got a slightly bigger army. And then we go on, you know... A tour of China, stopping in all of the all of the big stops. You know, Shanghai, Beijing. I can't name another Chinese city. That's really bad. You should know more than Hong two Kong. Chinese cities, Jim. <laughs> sure, Hong Kong. <laughs> Controversial. Do all the stops. Oh, no. You know, sorry. Ken. Steal all the wealth from the rich people, redistribute it to all the peasants, get them to join your army, and then take on the emperor rather than with six people. But. But okay. Yeah, look, more, more than six is definitely better. <laughs> yes. I think we can all agree attacking the capital city of a country with more than six people is probably ideal. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I yeah, agree. yeah, yeah definitely. You got me there, Jim. Yep. Is that your plan? I cannot follow my, you with my that. My plan is popular uprising by redis- redistribution of wealth. Wonderful. Um, so I only have one question for you. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to ruin your whole plan. Mm-hmm. Is um, where do the crickets come in? <laughs> Right here, Ken. All right. Yeah. Your turn, Emma. I think my... So my plan is a kind of, I guess, small part similar to yours, Jim. So basically, completely agree. You're not going to be able to take over China with... With six people. (laughs) With six people. (laughs) Like, as soon as you get there, as exactly what happens, it's going to get killed. You get exploded. They got way too far for what they did. I know, Yeah, it's like, what are you going to do when you get... How did they even get in anyway? Whatever. It happened. It's a thing. It's because it's six people. (laughs) Were there six or five? They're expecting an army and six people showed up they're like yeah sure whatever in you go also actually probably they definitely had their guard down because they were like we won they all should have just faked their deaths and then anyway whatever so when i was thinking of this one i 
you know, as we all agreed, this is a bloody difficult one to kind of think about. But I did some research and did some Googling in terms of strategies. And, you know, as I said before about um, the Kubla um, Khan guy technically could have done that, which I guess is similar to what you've done, Jim, in, mm. in your plan. But what they should have done is uh, taken the little bighorn approach. Wait for a really stupid white guy to show up? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what this means is instead of breaking into China, we take everywhere around China so that they want to be a part of it, which is essentially in a basic term, giving China FOMO. <laughs> so, I don't know how much you know about Chinese culture, but they're pretty happy just doing their own thing. <laughs> so anyway, it's definitely not a short term strategy, but as we know, Mulan was off in for 12 years and obviously this is going to take a lot of time to, to do. It's definitely a long game and mm-hmm. it's about creating a new world order. So step one is loosely to develop, breed and train. So basically what you want to do is you want to develop some great... Crickets. <laughs> develop some great... Um, develop um, some great infrastructure, link towns and cities, um, increase your population, train everybody, um, all the men going into the army, all the women are trained in fighting um, and subterfuge and educating everybody, men and women included. Mm-hmm. So everybody's all smart and bloody tip-top fighting shape. Um, step two is to expand. So you're looping around China um, and you're ex- you know expanding into bits of um like modern Russia, Kazakhstan, Korea, all those other places. Um, but you're just leaving, leaving China on their own. And the takeover is, is I guess, of the people rather than the military. So basically we want to be able to demonstrate that the infrastructure and the support of the people, that, you know, well-trained, educated, um, you know, everyone's here, everybody's happy, we're all working for the greater good. As people buy in, we move um, the borders, the towns, cities, regions, and as we win over um, the people, the mil- military, so all the men and everything, um, they support the new area from protection and backlash, and the women who are not on the front line, they can kind of defend the previous territories to prevent any flanking. Um, um, for the forward armies. Step three, basically continue step two until um, China is surrounded and basically just ignore them. Like just kind of treat them, treat them mean, keep them keen. And when, and when their citizens come out or they see that, you know, all the territories, you know, just, just being really nice to them, being hospitable, um, show off how, how cool and how great everything is. And then they, they go back in and they're like, oh, like, well, oh, man, they look like they're having a bloody great time. We're here trapped behind our wall and step four is Chinese people realize how good the empire is and that they're stuck behind their walls and they rebel and um, we either support them in their rebellion um, or they claim China for us and we support them and then we then take over. So it's a bit of a long game, but you're getting more than China at the end of it. You also get Vietnam and you get everything. (laughs) And as we all know, FOMO, FOMO wins out every time. (laughs) So... Uh, yeah. And look, if it works for Facebook, it works for, for my plan. I do have uh, I don't know, something to say about your plan is that, you know, China has historically been fairly self-sufficient and basically the British fought a war with China to get them to trade with them because the British showed up and they were like, hey, we want to buy your stuff. And the Chinese were like, no, nah, we're good. No, no. no, but I think that... And they the were point- like, don't you want this delicious opium? And the Chinese were like, no, nah, we're good. And then they went, no, you want this opium. And then they fought a war about it. Yeah, but the point is that the, the British and everybody else that's gone in there has gone in bloody guns blazing, being like, you need us, you need us. Whereas this plan is more like, no, we're just, I'm just doing me. And you're, you're going to slowly come to me because you're going to see how good it is as opposed to, so kind of like showing off how cool everything is as opposed to being like, hey, China, you need me. Take my opium. Take my opium. <laughs> Take it. You know, that, it. so it's more, it's more sort of, it's a kind of way of uh, long term taking over the world, essentially. But how will you get precious silk and delicious tea? The people will make it. <laughs> I think, but the, I think the point is that you're still going to be hospitable with them and and nice to them. So that doesn't completely cut you off from trading with them. It's more in terms of, I guess, bringing them to your thoughts and way your thinking, like yeah. your way of thinking. That's what's different and will come with time once they realize how great it is in my empire Hmm. this is a a, another sidetrack but do you guys know have you have i told you guys the story of how the british got instructions on how to make tea no so the british obviously drink a lot of tea 
uh, and for the longest time they could only import it from China and they had to pay you know all of this opium and all of this money to China to get them to export tea to Britain and then one day this white guy was like decided no I'm gonna find out how those Chinese make tea <laughs> and so he went up to northern China and said hey I'm this guy I'm from the south can you tell me how to make tea and they're like why would he lie about being from southern China sure we'll tell him how to make tea <laughs> classic white man uh huh. So they didn't know how to make tea. Well, they didn't know how to grow it and prepare oh, it and okay. ship it okay, and stuff gotcha. like that. They wanted they wanted that. Gotcha. They knew how to like make tea in a pot, but they wanted. To oh, okay, it. okay. I, I listened to that story completely differently. Sorry, I should have been clear no, on that. No, but yeah, good bluff. Anyway, <laughs> paid off. Look at us now. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's my plan. Okay. And I think it's fantastic because it's taking over the world, but in a nice way hmm. I feel like they don't deal well with outer culture so much I don't feel um, China in that scenario because it's got a whole empire going and there's one it's a, it's one ruler so they wouldn't deal well with external forces coming in so you really have to play it really 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 slow yeah. to not oh this is definitely like freaking long long game and it I think the point is to show is that obviously they greatly respect the the emperor, but it's to um, I guess it, it wouldn't it wouldn't show as some sort of like overruling or like dictatorship or anything like that. It's more of a look how great we all are working together and how that you know the fact that you know women are worth more and you know if they've got Mulan and and what I mean she obviously wouldn't have had to do what she did but you know women like Mulan who were growing up and you know over generations and things like that sort of getting stronger they're still not going to be educated or trained or anything like that in China whereas if they're seeing that women outside of China are eventually they're going to want to join all right are we ready to vote yep on 3 1 2 3 Ken Jim Jim yes <laughs> Jesus you know what that means, though. Oh, it's her tie. <laughs> God damn it! You both did. I swear to God, you both didn't vote for me just because you didn't want me to outright win. No, uh, that's not true. I, I had questions about your plan. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have voted for myself, I would. I implemented pricker to matchmakers. Congratulations, Jim. Congratulations, Thank Jim. You, you win by murdering lots of people. Yay! Oh, it was and redistribution of wealth. Bernie would be proud. <laughs> I'm not doing a fucking another draft to bloody <laughs> break this tie. We're going to have to think of something. Well, if Emma's won gone first place in two seasons, can we just declare her the winner? <laughs> yeah. I think Emma has to be enshrined as our winner for all time. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Yay, and I didn't even have to say it myself. <laughs> Clearly, I'm better than everyone. <laughs> uh, now I don't want it to happen. Totally, can we take I'm it back? I'm totally kidding. No. Oh, okay, well, Emma... It's been recorded Damn now. it, Emma's the best and also the songbird of the century. Thanks, Ken. What's your headline, Jim? Come join us. The power was in Shan Yu all along. <laughs> in Shan... Oh. The power was in Shan Yu all Shan along. Shan Yu all along. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is so good. <laughs> oh, and it's no. like... It's a newspaper headline in that it's like a... It's like one of those... um. War posters. What do they call them? Oh, like a propaganda <laughs> yeah, poster. Propaganda propaganda, yeah, propaganda posters. We want you to join Shan Yu. <laughs> Jeez. That was in Shan Yu oh. all along. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jim. Jim. <laughs> I'm a little bit sad that it went to a tie again. But... So am I. <laughs> Well, I do have one more thing that might take your mind off things just before yep. we end for tonight. Yeah. So we got some, I don't know if strong feedback is the right term, but we got some <laughs> some talking to about at the end of last season when we crowned an MVP listener. So I think no. for this season, we're just going to do like a, a, th- a thank you section oh. for some for some listeners who've done who've done us good. Um, so I would like to give a, a thank you and a shout out to my sister-in-law who not only provided me with some fun anecdotes to talk about, about me being... Uh, sorry. I thought you were going to say provide you with a niece. Yes, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> she provided me with a niece through which I get many fun anecdotes <laughs> to talk about on the show. But she also gave us some things to talk about on the show, like the Llama COVID story. And that was a good nice. story. I yeah. did enjoy that. Good work. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to shout out to, to Nick. I think he's been quite helpful behind the scenes in terms of some feedback and some tips and, and tricks along the way. Um, and also an honourable mention to, to my dad. Hashtag Emma's dad. <laughs> 
Nice. <laughs> fan club. <laughs> Hashtag what, what boycott Jim's dad's oh, fan yes. club. Oh, <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I should also thank uh, Jim, uh, Jim's, dad's Jim's dad's fan club manager. J, wait, wait. JDFC. JDFC for her... Which I like because his... it also sounds like I have a soccer team. J- <laughs> J- I would like to thank JDFC for their uh, email to us. And I would also like to thank Juliana for your headline idea. Uh, call me. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yep. <laughs> call me. <laughs> that's one way to do it. Shout out to my mum. <laughs> Give me some stories to talk about on the show. <laughs> Thanks, mum. Feel- yeah, I feel like, you know, just everybody... Who's who's reached out? Everybody yeah. who's helped yeah. us in some way. I'm sure we've forgotten somebody, but we appreciate you all. Yeah, thanks everyone. Okay, so I think that's the end of our regularly scheduled Disney season, or at least of the the normal episodes. Oh god, it's a little sad. It is a little sad, isn't it? There's been so much Disney. What am I gonna bloody watch now? Yeah, Star Trek. <laughs> we've been through this. Not one. You get <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, well, until next time, folks, this is the last normal air quotes episode of this season. Uh, next episode, we'll be doing something a little bit different. We'll be doing we'll be doing a draft of all the different Disney villains. Woo! So we're going to decide once and for all who were the best, who were the weak. And who won last season? <laughs> because <laughs> and I need last- to know who wins out <laughs> of me and Ken and uh, how we'll figure out this tiebreaker. Look, who knows? Who knows? We'll uh, look. We're we're, we're doing things on the we're doing on the doing things on the fly. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we're free spirits. Did you say Relatively. we're three spirits? Yes, we're three free spirits. <laughs> and then after that, uh, it's new season time, and I think we can announce it now that we're going to be doing a sci-fi season. Yes, sci-fi. So you hear that, friends? Sci-fi. You hear that, you fucking nerds? <laughs> we're not doing a Star Trek season. We're just doing sci-fi. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not doing a Star Trek season mm. yet. Sad kazoo noise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's been a fun season so far, but I will see you guys next time for the draft. See you then. Bye. 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 Call me. Thanks for listening to World Domination. You can find links to all the things we talked about, our other episodes, our social media handles, and our contact information at anchor.fm slash worlddomination. If you want to tell us something, feel free to get in touch. And remember, if you like the show, make sure to tell your mum about it.